are special supernatural moments in our lives which are really turning points. I would have to say when I was 16 and I got born again, oh, that's the biggest turning point. I would also have to say when I was 23, I got baptized in the Holy Spirit. Oh, big turning point, big turning point. But I want to tell you probably the greatest turning point that has affected my life with the miraculous came after that. And my husband and I, we just had a little church and we sowed into a ministry that was a tremendous international ministry. I mean, they were reaching the nations of the world and there wasn't television at that time, you know, and they were doing it through overseas crusades and literature and all of that. And so we thought, this is a great ministry. Let's sow in it. Never knowing that that sowing was going to bring the biggest miracle of my whole life and would not only work in me, but would flop over on Sarah too. So we sowed in the life of Daisy and T.L. Osborne, who, you know, changed the world, really. I mean, you can go almost any place in the world, and they have had a meeting there in the past. So one day, I had the opportunity to meet them personally. They lived in Tulsa, and Daisy said to me, you know, Marilyn, uh, you're going to be a world evangelist. You're going to meet presidents and leaders of the world, and you are going to affect the whole world with the word. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what I thought. I thought, yeah, Daisy and crazy rhyme. But folks, that's exactly what has happened. When we begin to sow in that ministry and become a partner, the mantle of that ministry came on me. And that is so important. I thought, well, what is a mantle? It is an anointing. What is an anointing? It is the power that enables you to do the supernatural. And so when that started, I didn't even believe it, to be honest with you. But God began to open doors, especially in Egypt. And I remember sitting in the living room of Mrs. Anwar Sadat. Her husband had been killed, and this was a year later, and praying with her. Is that wonderful or is that wonderful? So I'm beginning to see little pieces of this coming to pass. And then I don't think I really got hold of it, but I continued, and my husband and I continued to be a part of Daisy and T.L. Osborne's ministry. We were partners, but we didn't realize with partnership comes the mantle. The mantle of the anointing that's on them comes on us when we begin to sow into that. So I've been looking in the Bible and studying the mantle. And you know, when I look at Elijah, oh my goodness, what a miraculous prophet. I mean, he shook Israel. He shook Ahab, you know, and Jezebel and all of that mess. He had a special anointing that was so wonderful. And it appears that it was his mantle that showed that anointing because he would take his mantle and hit the Jordan River and say, be opened. It would be opened. And so he became very discouraged one day and kind of, you know, ran into the wilderness and said, God, I want to die because he, a great miracle had just happened. And the Lord spoke to him. And I love this. He had an angel touch him. He got some good sleep. He had an angel fix food for him, probably angel food cake, and he ate it. And then the Lord said to him, your ministry isn't over, but there is another one who will have the mantle and it will be Elisha. He pre-named him to Elijah. He didn't even know him. And so here is Elijah going on and he sees Elisha and he takes his mantle. I love this. And he casts it on Elisha and Elisha left everything in a sense and said, I got to have the mantle. I've got to have the mantle. I need that anointing. And so we follow the miracles of Elijah, which are out of this world. But then we see something with Elisha. He got the mantle only. He got it with a double portion and he got it because he asked for it. And he got it because he waited on Elijah. Now you say, well, how do you know he did that? The Bible says very plainly, he poured water on his hands. He just waited on him, waited on him, waited on him. And then 
he was ready. He was going to ask. Folks, believe big and ask big. You know, I'm asking for nations. Why not? So he said, I want double portion of what you have. That's what I want. So he asked bigger than Elijah. So Elijah, he's not unhappy about that. God is not unhappy about big faith. And Elijah said, well, if you see me when I go, you'll receive the mantle. So we know Elijah went up, but he didn't just go up. He cast his mantle down. And who was waiting for it? Elisha. Oh, he was waiting for it. And he took the mantle and he went over to the river Jordan and he said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? And he hit the waters and the water opened. He knew he had received the mantle. You know, I'm so happy with the mantle God has given me because I think so many times, how are we going to reach people? And the Lord really gave me three anointings in the mantle. And I believe it came from the Osbournes. Great hunger for the word. A great hunger for the supernatural, to see healings and miracles and God move in supernatural ways. And a great hunger to reach nations. Those are the three anointings. Now, who is going to catch that mantle? Because when I look at Elisha, and I counted his miracles, he did double the number of miracles that Elijah did. He got what he asked for, but he was buried with his mantle. I am not going to be buried with my mantle. No way. I'm going to cast my mantle on everyone who wants a greater hunger for the word, who wants to live in the supernatural, who wants to reach nations. I am going to cast my mantle on them. Who wants to be buried with it? You say, well, why are you talking about burial? Because I'm over 83 years old. I don't know how long. And Sarah has got this mantle. No question. She loves the word. When you hear her teach, it's the word, the word, the word. She loves the supernatural. She loves to pray for the sick. She loves to see the miraculous transformation. And no doubt she loves the nations and even takes her children with her to the nations. What happened? She caught the mantle. And folks, she was a partner to MHN as sown and sown and sown. Served and served and served. And so partners, you have the mantle. I trust you claim it. And I have something so special that I want you to see. And so when you get this, this month, you know, you need to open it immediately because there's something so supernatural in this for you. Remember, I'm not being buried with my mantle. I'm casting it on everyone who will catch it. But folks, to catch it, you're going to have to be a servant. You're going to have to be a partner. You're going to have to sow into it. So it's very important that I can cast this mantle on you. And of course, you can get on our website and see how to receive the mantle. But I know there are thousands of people watching this program all over the world that God is calling you to have a supernatural walk in the Word, to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit, and not only to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit, but to care about nations. Folks, nations affect us. They are affecting us. The whole world, we're so knit together and bonded together. And so are you going to carry the mantle or are you just going to gripe? Are you going to sow and become a partner that could have a mantle that was like Elisha? It could be double portion of what I've ever done. You know, I've been in 128 nations, but there are a lot more nations than that. You may think, oh, that's a lot. But folks, there are a lot more, a lot more places that have not been reached and a lot more of the supernatural. Why couldn't you pray for sick members in your family? Why couldn't you see them healed? It says, these signs shall follow them that believe. And so you must believe for the supernatural, the power of the Holy Spirit. And what else? We have to pray for the nations. Now I'm gonna tell you what I do. Every day I pray for about 45 nations the troubled nations of the world. And I'm seeing God move in them, but I've been doing this for years and years. When you catch this mantle, you wake up some morning, you're watching the news, 
and you see these terrible things that are going on and you think, I'm going to pray and change the news. See, the mantle brings the supernatural. And I think, poor Saul. Remember King Saul and how he was with David? But do you know that he wanted the mantle of Samuel? He wanted Samuel's mantle, but he wasn't a partner to Samuel. He did the things that were against Samuel. He never sowed in Samuel's life. And when Samuel came and spoke the negative things that were going to happen to him, he grabbed the mantle of Samuel and ripped it. He never got it because he never sowed into it. We don't want to miss the mantle. And then I look at Samuel. You know, his mother made him a coat every year when she took him up to be with the priest, with Eli. Every year she brought him a new coat. I think when I look at that, that was the mantle that was going to be on him all his life. That mantle would be for the supernatural. You would see miracles. You would see people transformed. You would see how the anointing came on David. But you see how David served. You see how he sowed. Oh, I want to say to you again, when you get this piece of mail, open it immediately and respond immediately because we're going to have a special day of prayer when we're going to pray for you in April. Now listen, and we want that mantle to fall on you and God to do miracles in you. But if I don't have your name, I don't have your needs. Honey, I can't get it out of the clouds. So you got to respond. You have to respond quickly. And you have to stay right there because I'm not through with you yet. Stay there. Argentina and Uruguay. While we're there, we get to see all kinds of amazing things. We get to visit Colonia and Uruguay, plus we get to tour the burial site of Vita Perón and tour around Buenos Aires and see amazing sites there. And Mom, the best part of the whole trip is that we get to minister. Yes, we do. And we get to minister in a hot situation because revival began there 60 years ago and the whole nation is being shaken. So we will be involved in healing meetings, in youth meetings, in street evangelism, and Uruguay, we believe we're gonna have a big healing meeting there also. Mm, how wonderful. And we will be in this beautiful city founded in 1680. Call, bring people with you. Let the Holy Spirit shake you and use you. The mantle has the anointing. Wow. Is that big? Oh, yeah. And again, I want to say to you, I'm not going to be buried with my mantle. I'm casting it on my partners. And I have something so important for you to respond to. If you have received this mail, you need to write down your prayer request because we're going to have a special day of prayer. And I don't want you to miss it. You say, oh, I have tons of prayer requests. But if you don't write them and send them, you know, I can't read them in the clouds. So get them to me for that special day of prayer. So respond now quickly. Don't put it off. Now, I'm going to tell you something else about my mantle. You know, I'm in my 80s, and uh, someone said to me the other day, how long are you going to travel? I said, until I make the last trip to heaven, you know. And I went to the doctor the other day, and I want you to know what's in my mantle. 
there's health in my mantle. And he said to me, Marilyn, you have excellent health. And then when I went to the dentist to have my teeth cleaned, he said, you're better than you were seven years ago. Oh, what is in the mantle? A hunger for the word. And when people say to me, you know, how, how did you do all this? And I say, I have a hunger for the word. And so in the mantle, when you receive my mantle, you become a partner and you get involved. Let me tell you, you get a hunger for the word of God. I love the word. I spend hours, not just in the past, but daily. I just hunger and thirst for the word, but also the supernatural. You know, I pray for the sick and see unusual healing and miracles. And I do it on airplanes. I do it in churches. I do it in big meetings. I do it all around the world because it's not my name. It's his name. And it's his name that this anointing, his outpouring of the Holy Spirit that gives you the supernatural in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But can we just sit here and act like, oh, well, let everybody go to hell. Oh, I can't do that because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God loved nations. And, you know, I take Psalm 2, ask for the heathen, the uttermost parts of the earth for your possession. There are places I want to go I haven't been yet. There are places I wanted to go and believe for for a long time, like Iran. You know, I tried to get into Iran for four years and they wouldn't let me in. And so finally, I got a breakthrough and got into Iran because when I would apply as a tourist, they'd say, we know who you are. <laughs> You're not just a tourist, but you know, God gave me favor and I've gotten in twice. Do you know that my biggest meetings are in Muslim countries and I don't compromise. I teach the word and I pray for the sick and I invite people to receive Jesus. Can you just pray for nations? Praying for nations daily is very important. And this mantle, I want to throw it on you. It's important that you receive it. You become a partner because Elisha was a partner to Elijah. He served him. You know, he was there to catch the mantle. And then I'm a little bit disappointed in Elisha. Though he asked for double portion miracles and the anointing, the mantle is the miraculous, he was buried with his. Now you may say, well, how do you know that he was buried with it? Because they threw a dead man in the tomb and the dead man was raised. That anointing was still in that mantle. I don't want to be buried with mine. I want to throw it on you. I want you to be a part. I want you to have a hunger for the word. I want you to live and move in the supernatural. I want you to pray over the nations and change the news, not just be discouraged by it. And of course, you can get on our website, but I want you, those of you who have this, open this immediately. I mean, don't put it off, honey. Do it now and put your prayer requests in because we're going to have a supernatural day of prayer. And I want you to be included. And don't forget, you can put whole lists of things. We're going to pray. And we're going to pray as a big team. And we know that God is moving and performing in your life. And I believe you were appointed for such a time as this. I believe that. You just think you're jumping around on this world for nothing, honey? That's not true. You're here for a specific purpose. And then... I want to talk to you a little more about Elijah and his mantle. You know, Elijah got discouraged. And, you know, sometimes I've had things that were just discouraging. You know, people said, well, that will never happen. You'll never do that. It's just, I remember I wanted to go to Ethiopia and have a healing meeting. And everybody told me it will never happen. It'll never happen. And so I would think, you know, they say a woman can't do it or I can't do it. I'm too old. I'm too young. I'm not educated enough. I don't have enough anointing. And so that can be discouraging. And I noticed Elijah, when he got discouraged, he put his face in his mantle. What did he do? I got to get a lift here and know the mantle is more important than my circumstances. 
So there are nations I still want to reach, places I still want to go that people say, well, it's not going to happen. But folks, I know the anointing can break the yoke. The anointing can do everything. The anointing can transform your family. And of course, it's very important, very important that we believe that anointing is for us. As I said, I want to throw my mantle your way. <laughs> I want you to think, where's my Bible in the morning when you get up and you want to read your Bible? I want you to think, wow, I'm not going to just feel sorry for the sick. I'm going to pray for the sick. I'm going to believe for the gifts of the Spirit. I'm going to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And when I watch the news, what am I there for? I'm not going to have a pity party. I'm going to look at my mantle. That's where the anointing and the miraculous is. And there is a future in the mantle. Because when Elijah did that, he was discouraged. If you remember, God didn't blast him. He doesn't condemn you. He didn't condemn me when I didn't see some of these things happen and I started to give up. He didn't condemn me. He just said, you know, Elijah, you're tired. And he gave him, I had an angel come. He had a good night of sleep. The angel cooked food for him. Of course, angel food. And then he gave him new directions and took him out of the cave and the pit that he was in and sent him to Elisha. God has sent me to you. You're watching this program today. God has sent me to you. Don't just sit there and blow this off. This is a divine appointment with the Holy Spirit. It's a divine appointment. And I want you to be a part of this mantle, this anointing. And when you have discouraging times, and, you know, as I said, a lot of times people said to me, you can't do it. But, you know, folks, if you put your face in the anointing, you can do everything. And there is a future in your mantle, perhaps for your children, for your grandchildren, for people in your church. Who knows what the future of the anointing is in your life? Who knows? And when God called me to cover the earth with the word, did I ever dream I would be going to 128 countries? Did I ever dream I would go to Pakistan and Khartoum, Sudan and have a meeting with 65,000 people? No. And you know, folks, I haven't even been to Bible school. I've had one. I love the Bible. You know, I have a bachelor's degree, but I have an honorary doctorate. And so it's not my name. And that's what has so encouraged me so many times when I've been in the middle of a problem. It's not my name that heals the sick. It's not my name that changes nations. It's not my name. It's his name. And you can stand in the anointing of his name. And I just want to say this to you one more time. I want to nag you a little bit, okay? Don't forget, if you have this mail, to open it up and write out your prayer request because we're going to believe for unusual miracles all over the world. Wherever you are, get involved. And of course, you say, I don't have it. Well, you can get on the website. But I want to look at your prayer request that day. I want to look at you because why am I looking at you? Because, honey, you're catching my mantle. When I go home to be with Jesus, <laughs> my mantle's already fallen on all of these wonderful partners.
excited to invite you to join with us an amazing, powerful group trip to Argentina and Uruguay. While we're there, we get to see all kinds of amazing things. We get to visit Colonia and Uruguay, plus we get to tour the burial site of Vita Perón and tour around Buenos Aires and see amazing sights there. And mom, the best part of the whole trip is that we get to minister. Yes, we do. And we get to minister in a hot situation because revival began there 60 years ago and the whole nation is being shaken. So we will be involved in healing meetings and youth meetings and street evangelism and Uruguay. We believe we're going to have a big healing meeting there also. Mm, how wonderful. And we will be in this beautiful city founded in 1680. Call. Bring people with you. Let the Holy Spirit shake you and use you. You may be saying, what do you have on? <laughs> I have on a mantle. I believe this mantle is for you. And we are sending something to many of you. And if you didn't get it, get on the website. But we want to get your prayer needs. And we want you to open it and get it to us immediately. Because there's going to be a certain day when we're going to cast the mantle of the miraculous on the prayer needs that come in. So if I don't have yours, can't pray. If I don't have yours, can't throw the mantle on you. And I want you to have my mantle. This is so important. What is it? It's a hunger for the word. What else is it? You live and move in the supernatural. What else is it? It's reaching the nations of the world. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. 